Okay, uh, scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, like the energy, the effort, the competition. Still a lot of things to clean up. Assignment-wise, pre-snap penalties, uh, turnovers, th stuff like that. So, um, thought Rourke had a good day. He's really sort of separated himself pretty significantly in that scrimmage. And uh, we're still developing players, depth, and scheme. So it's an important week. Is that new left to Todd? Yeah, Kurt, um, kind of an extension of that with the quarterbacks. I mean, have you seen enough to sort of have a decision about who's going to be the starter? I know you said you might not announce it publicly, but have you seen enough? And, and what has kind of stood out through the first two weeks of fall camp with the quarterback position? Well, I think, you know, Rourke stacks days. You know, he had an off day or two last week. Uh, or maybe he wasn't real good in seven on seven, but came back and had a really good two minute drill, something like that. But for the most part, uh, he's been playing uh, good football now. Always room for improvement for anybody on this football team, any coaching staff member, never satisfied, um, but consistent and knows how to play quarterback. A lot goes into that position. You know, he's an extension of a coach, and uh, he's got to make good decisions, choices and decisions that <clears throat> are going to lead uh, to giving you the best chance of success as a football team. Sometimes it might not be making a spectacular play. It might be getting you back to a normal down distance situation. But it also highly involves processing information, finding the open guy, and getting him the ball. So... Um, Nothing's really changed there uh, in terms of how I feel coming out of spring. You know, Taven um, is capable of making a wild play, but there has to be more play and play out. Uh, consistency, eye discipline, focus, eyes downfield, making the right reads, securing the football, not turning the ball over. Um, proper footwork and run game so we don't have fumbles in the run game, things, things of that nature. And the two freshmen are getting better. The two freshmen are getting better. Kurt, uh, what did you see from the defensive side of the ball in the scrimmage uh, that you know stood, stood out to you? You know, we thudded the scrimmage. So anytime you thud the scrimmage, it's really kind of hard to run the football because you can't take into account broken tackles or perimeter tackles. Um, but put good pressure on the quarterback. Pretty solid for the most part against the run. Have to contain the quarterback a little bit better when he's in the pocket, uh, particularly a guy that's got some athleticism. Uh, we'll have to improve it on that. In the opener, FIU's got a pretty crafty athletic quarterback. Um, so gave up a few explosives. So. A little bit like the offense, uh, you know, there was good, there was bad, there was ugly, but it's significantly better than it was in the spring, which the goal coming into fall camp is second time through it, more consistency in performance, play in, play out at a high, high level. Uh, we're not there yet, and we still have things to install. Yeah, just what were your takeaways from the offensive line play uh, in the scrimmage and just kind of how they're progressing with their, I guess, togetherness, having some new guys at that position? Yeah, solid, I'd say. Still some technique, things to clean up so we can protect the quarterback a little better. Um, you know, our defense is a handful when it comes to protecting the passer because schematically Haynes, you know, knows how to get to the quarterback. So he challenges those guys up front. Uh, so um, I discipline and footwork. No, we've got competition still on the offensive line. Jared, are you ready to say anything? Kind of going along that, uh, uh, Coach Bostad was the one coach you kind of uh, kept from the last staff. Just what's it been like working with him and, and you know, watching him uh, develop these guys? Yeah. Well, you know, he's a veteran and uh, with a great reputation. And he's got, he really works his guys. He's a tough guy. Bob is a little bit old school, uh, which I like. Um, but that's such a critical position. And, um, it takes a while to kind of mesh, mesh in terms of, you know, 
things I'm used to doing or we're used to doing offensively versus what he's done coming together. And uh, I like the way that process has gone. And, uh, you know, he's a real asset. He's winning edge. And, uh, you know, I know he's going to get the most out of the offensive line. Uh, Coach, getting through fall camp healthy has been a priority. How did your team get through the scrimmage on Saturday? We had a couple uh, depth guys uh, have some injuries. Uh, Josh Philiston uh, injured his knee, be out a while. Same with DePepe, the transfer from Michigan State. Um, JoJo Johnson will be out a couple weeks. Um, other than that, you know, we've got some minor things, but nothing significant. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, uh, you mentioned Haynes and the way that he's been able to kind of um, create pressure schematically. You've kind of worked with him for a while. I'm, I'm wondering, how have you maybe seen him evolve with the looks that he throws? And um, also, how, how involved are you in that? I know you have more of an offensive uh, offensive history. I think he's always evolving, always trying to learn, always trying to find the edge. He's a little bit like I am offensively. Uh, you know, his brain never stops working or thinking about football. You know, I'm sure he goes home and he's trying to figure out how to get the quarterback, just like I go home and I'm thinking about something. And. Uh, so schematically, I think it's evolved quite a bit. It really has. And it's, you know, it's about freeing up the guys that can get to the quarterback and putting them in the best one-on-ones to get to the quarterback and still be sound in your coverage. So you know, I don't get real involved in the spring or fall camp. Now, we watch all 11 on 11, all practice, 7 on 7, 11 on 11. We all watch together as a staff. You know, and I'll run the remote. So I see who's doing what on the field and understand what we're doing. In season, generally uh, middle of the week, Thursday, you know, I'll go back and watch the defensive tape versus scouts. I'll, I'll watch Sunday the opponent's offense. And I've probably seen them on some exchanges, so I've got a pretty good feel for what we're facing. Because we're putting together a, a plan, ODK, gives us the best chance. And if I see a couple things uh, during their practice that I have a question about maybe I'll, I'll sit down with the defensive staff for 15, 30 minutes at the start of a morning. And you know they'll give me the answers or this is out. Yeah, we don't like that either. That's about, now game day, I'll, I'll be on with the offense and the defense. Um, I'll switch over. But the, only, the reason I switch over really with the defense early is just to make sure the flow of communication is good with substitution. But every once in a while, uh, you know, offense will come out and give you something a little different, and you're not lined up right, and maybe an uncovered receiver, and that's where I got to burn that time out real quick before they snap the football. Something long, because, you know, everywhere I've been, the head coach calls timeouts. You know what I mean? I think we've had a, maybe a D coordinator call a timeout twice in my 14 years, and I think one time maybe a player. But, you know what I mean? I got to be on top of those situations. Uh, yeah, with the returning linebacker tandem, I mean, from JMU with Aiden and, and Jalen Walker, what is their chemistry? Is, is that something you could build kind of the foundation of the defense around? And how um, more advanced are they from last year to this year? Yeah, well, you know, those two guys have a lot of reps together. And, and Aiden, uh, it's been well documented, kind of the quarterback of the defense. And Jay Walk really is a run and hit guy, very fast, very fast. Made a lot of big, explosive defensive plays for us, interceptions for touchdowns, things of that nature. So uh, they're used to playing with each other, communicating with each other. But you know, at the end of the day, every defense has a certain responsibility. And they, they got to know that and do their job, regardless of who's playing on the other side. Similar kind of question. I mean, out on the edge, you got Linnell Carr, you got uh, Mikhail Kamari, you got Jacob Mangum for our, for our, among others, some experience out there. How has that experience been borne out in terms of how they project to their teammates and also in their performance so far in camp? Yeah. Well, I think the one guy that's really upped his game is Kamara. And saw that in the spring. It's continued in the fall. He, he's just playing at another level. And, you know, early on, he's a guy like we got him as a freshman in 20, the COVID year. And he started for us as a true freshman. But he had two bad, he, with two bad shoulders that both needed surgically repaired at the end of the season. Couldn't do them both at the same time. Had to do one, then four months later, six months later, do another. So he's healthy. And uh, 
he's a good player. Uh, Carr, we're just getting back into the swing of things. Didn't practice in the spring, missed a couple early practices, but he's been out there the last six, seven days uh, and uh, like the way he's progressing. And JMF, uh, you know, can play on either side. Played in the boundary a lot in the springs, played into the field uh, more this spring uh, with Kamara sort of being a swing guy. Um, and uh, getting better every day. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.